February 22nd uh, of last year. Would, would, have you seen Wilder's uh, uh, improvements with Malik Scott as they're working in the gym? Do you think he can I, alter the fight, at least make it more competitive, if not win? Let me tell you something. Yeah, I think it's an interesting fight. I think there's one winner, and that's Tyson Fury. And I think he's going to knock Wilder on his ass quicker this time than he did last time. <laughs> You got to love old Bob Arum giving his prediction on Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder for the third, the trilogy fight. And he said, they asked him about the improvements and this and that. He was listen, listen, I think there's going to be one winner and his name is Tyson Fury and he's going to knock Wilder on his ass quicker than he did the last time. <laughs> so... One thing that I hear, okay, within um, hearing what Bob Arum said is definite confidence. And it only leads me to believe on why there was no fight, why there was no rebuttal or... Uh, argument with the arbitration. It all goes back to the reasoning behind them wanting or surrendering the idea of fighting Deontay Wilder a third time. I think they wanted that fight because they knew it was an easier fight. They knew it was a fight that not only could be easier, may easily made because of uh, site fees and networks, which really they are two different networks. But it's for one, it happened already. But for two, I think the if you hear how Bob Arum speaks, he's not even really concerned about the winner. He's not concerned about the progress or the accomplishments that Deontay Wilder made in camp. He's not worried about any of that stuff. He's simply worrying about making money on and getting a crowd, an audience, so he can make all the money possible. That's what he's worried about. He's not worried about if Tyson Fury wins or loses because it hasn't even really crossed his mind, given the fact that Tyson Fury's already done that. But I call that not only confidence, I call that overconfidence. Because what ends up happening is you think, hey, this has happened before. Tyson Fury's been in there with him twice. He outboxed him the first time. He beat the piss out of him the second time. And it's going to happen even quicker this time. That means you're totally overlooking Deontay Wilder. Absolutely, 100%. And I think that is the worst mindset you should be. But then again, being a promoter, you're not a trainer. The trainer worries about strategy, technique, dangers, warnings, and so have you. Promoters just kind of sit back and they do what they do. They do the paperwork. They're somewhat on the lawyer side of doing everything. And they're the ones in the suit that's promoting, this is my fighter. This is my whatever. This is my venue. This is my uh, fight card. You know, So they're not really worried about the aspects of... Uh, of the fighters, which they should be because they should be more concerned with the possibilities of Wilder throwing that scud missile right hand and landed it on Tyson Fury and the same thing repeating itself it did back in December of 2018. So I see uh, Bob Arum less worried or less concerned with Deontay Wilder had he would been while a uh, 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 Fury fighting Anthony Joshua. See, there's another thing. You go back to the pessimistic talking of fighting Joshua. Joshua holds a new threat. He had to put a, he had to eat crow because he said that Pulev would beat Anthony Joshua. So Joshua somewhat uh, reluctantly made a believer out of him. That's why if you notice that when you talk about Anthony Joshua, you you hear more negative talking. That's why it was never a, hey, that's we're going to get Joshua and Fury in there. That's going to happen. You didn't hear Bob saying any of that. Why? Because for one, Bob Arum knows that Anthony Joshua is a more difficult opponent than Deontay Wilder. Why? Because Tyson Fury has already beat Deontay Wilder. It's a no-brainer. 
So you can't blame Bob Arum from thinking or believing or having that comfort that he's sitting in. If you hear the words that spewed out of his mouth, the way they spewed out of his mouth, he doesn't have a care in the world. But this is boxing, the sport that I love that I hate so much for a particular reason, people. These type of things happen when you don't expect them to happen. Who thought Alexander Povetkin was going to knock out Dillian White? Who thought... Andy Ruiz was going to stop Anthony Joshua in Madison Square Garden and arriving on the Americas. Who thought Buster Douglas was going to knock out Mike Tyson? Who thought that? No one. Okay? And the people that did, hopefully they put money on it. They put their money where their mouth was. And they decided to turn into an aggressive gambler that particular night and that particular night only. To make a profit off of a prediction like that. But we definitely see that Bob Arum is showing that he's comfortable with the decision that they made not to fight the arbitration and to take on Deontay Wilder with no hassle, no fuss, no anything else. OK, he's comfortable. That's what I see when I hear Bob Arum saying that he's going to knock Wilder on his ASS. OK, this is what we hear. But they so it lets you know on a person that's a business minded person, he's going to think of the possibilities are the lower risks first. Anthony Joshua is a higher risk. OK, Deontay Wilder is a lower risk. Why? Because he beat Deontay Wilder already. And he's saying, hey, he ain't he's going to not only do it, he's going to do it quicker. That's just showing confidence. A lot of people would call it arrogance. I call it overconfidence. Because he knew he made the right business decision. Okay? But anyway, you guys tell me what you think of Bob Arum making the comment that uh, Wilder will be knocked on his ASS quicker by Tyson Fury this time. Tell me what you think. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys been counterpunch. Peace.